Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we'll summarize what has happened regarding Australian, Tasmanian, and New Zealand's weather and climate modification activity, starting in 1947 and working our way up to the modern era. One common theme across countries that have weather modification activities is the level of property damage caused and the loss of life, which is quite common considering the length of time the activity has taken place for and how unnecessary the loss of life is. Weather modification activities cannot be acceptable as a cause of death. In the video about the UK's activity in the 1950s and the deaths and damage caused by that activity you were introduced to the concept that weather modification is an unjustified killer. You will see more proof of it in this video regarding Tasmania. You will see more evidence for it in future videos such as the German floods in July 2021 where approximately 300 people lost their lives across Germany. Holland and Belgium due to extreme weather events. You will also see it in the UAE where property damage is common during their weather modification operations, in Kerala, India and also the USA. Vietnam is well known to have suffered due to American weather modification activity. A common greenwashing scenario is hydropower. Hydropower is often referred to as sustainable, clean energy. This is a lie. Weather modification is used by hydropower companies across the world, including Snowy Hydro in Australia, the Northern California Power Company, NCPC, and Idaho Power in the United States and also in Ethiopia, Africa. Atmospheric moisture redistribution is not environmentally friendly. Particulates have to be added to the sky to attract moisture to the target area which causes drought in other areas due to the reduction in atmospheric moisture that should be in that area. The particulate sprayed, as in, distributed by aircraft or flared off via ground-based generators should not be in the natural sky. The unnatural manipulation of the natural environment is not environmentally friendly or sustainable. Tasmania Weather Modification, 1964-2016 Hydro-Tasmania is one company that recognized the destructive side of weather modification, after their activity caused an extreme weather event in 2016. They ceased operations on 7 June, 2016 after three people died in floods. One of the three people, Mary Alford, was a pensioner who died when she could not escape the flood waters created by the state-run, Hydro-Tasmania, cloud seeding operations. When the news first broke it was clear to everyone what had happened although a few months later the Tasmanian authorities announced the deaths were not caused by weather modification operations. Obviously the authorities had to backtrack and claim that to protect their own legal obligations. The authorities' stance contradicts Hydro-Tasmania's stance. At the time of the flood the Tasmanian government acknowledged it was the cloud seeding operations that caused the extreme weather event and the target area covered by the operations was significantly reduced through legislation. The extreme weather event occurred on 6 June. 2016 and as mentioned the operations by Hydro-Tasmania were stopped on 7 the June. They never resumed their operations, even after the state legislators, in June, reduced the target area of operations and gave their permission for operations to continue whilst investigations took place. If the deaths and property damage on 6 June were not caused by Hydro-Tasmania then the state would not have changed the legislation and more importantly, Hydro-Tasmania would not have permanently ceased its operations on 7 June. Official Hydro-Tasmania statements include Hydro-Tasmania no longer conducts a cloud seeding program. Cloud seeding flights stopped in June 2016, and Hydro-Tasmania was involved in both experimental and operational cloud seeding over Tasmania and mainland Australia from 1964. In that time we developed a great deal of knowledge and expertise in the area. Our cloud seeding operations were usually conducted between May and October each year when conditions were suitable. Tasmania Climate Modification Geoengineering In August 2016 the University of Tasmania announced a project which would start in 2017. Titled Geoengineering the Southern Ocean, a transdisciplinary assessment with the idea being to publish a guide for policymakers on pathways to research governance for geoengineering studies a project that would involve a multifaceted study of geoengineering and geoengineering governance. Australia Weather Modification, 1947 onwards In January 2017, Tim Roberts published an article in Australia's 
Newcastle Herald in which he stated the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, CSIRO, carried out systematic cloud seeding with dry ice and sodium iodide from 1947 in an effort to bring more rain. The National Archives of Australia has an article titled Cloud Seeding Operation off the Coast of Sydney in which it is stated an aspect of one of numerous cloud seeding experiments that have taken place in Australia since 1947, including a six-year experiment that began in the Snowy Mountains in 2004 with silver iodide being sent into passing clouds from aerosol generators on the ground, despite all the experimental work conducted to help develop the technique, Tasmania is the only Australian state so far to use seeding on a significant scale. And we know how that turned out. We also know that Tasmania is not the only Australian state to use weather modification on a significant scale. The National Archives of Australia should know better than that when publishing articles that make false claims. The Snowy Mountains are not in Tasmania. A 2022 UK Freedom of Information request contained a document from 27 February, 1954 written by H. W. L. Apsalm of the Meteorological Office for the Meteorological Research of MRO, at the Air Ministry, MOD UK, in which it is written about the CSIRO experiments using dry ice in the Sydney area. On 3 December, 1954, the UK's Sunderland Daily Echo and Shipping Gazette newspaper printed an article by B. J. Mason who resided at the Department of Meteorology at the Imperial College of Science, London. Mason stated that large-scale operations have been conducted in the United States, Canada, South America, France, Spain and Italy. It was also stated that it has been shown beyond all reasonable doubt, particularly by a series of tests carried out in Australia, that suitable shower clouds can be induced to rain by seeding them with dry ice from aircraft. In the UK's Shields Daily News from Northumberland from 2 February, 1955 it was stated by a Reuters correspondent that a new method of cloud seeding by spreading rain-making chemicals over a 200-mile wide front is being tried out in Australia in Queensland. More than five and a half inches, which is nearly 13 centimetres, of rain fell, in the target area, where the scientists were working. More tests would be carried out. Moving ahead to 1957, the UK's Hartlepool Northern Daily Mail reported on 9 April that Australia's backroom weather boffins believe that they have almost succeeded in causing rain, where and when it is needed. The article stated further to announce success, all they needed, was to examine rainfall statistics resulting from their two years of continual seeding of a test area in the Australian Alps on the Victoria-New South Wales border. In Australia, in the state of Victoria, the person responsible for the administration of the 1967 Rainmaking Control Act, Act No. 7637, is the Minister for Agriculture. 1968 The Birmingham Daily Post, in the UK, reported on 12 June. 1968 that cloud seeding experiments are ongoing in Australia and America, its use in Britain appears a long, long way off if, indeed, it is even practical. If you want to check the accuracy of that Britain, as per 1968 statement, please watch the UK weather and climate modification summary. In the 21st century. In New South Wales. The legislation for the Snowy Mountains Cloud Seeding Act 2004 was updated in 2012 changing a trial cloud seeding research project to cloud seeding operations. 2008 The 21st of January, saw the Queensland Government Weather Modification Statement Queensland Cloud Seeding Project underway. This was announced by the Minister for Sustainability, Climate Change and Innovation. In April 2022 the media went into conspiracy theorist priming mode by publishing stories about how Handel Aviation were responsible for flooding caused by their cloud seeding operations. Handel Aviation operator Mark Handel told AFP that the company does not seed clouds. So it was a conspiracy theory right? Or was it a deflection? Would the same it is not us response come from Snowy Hydro? No, it wouldn't. 2013 to 2023 is when, according to Eric Henriksen, from KXAN News, Austin, Texas, the 20th of April, 2023, that the Texas-based company Rainwater Tech had been carrying out the electric charge method of weather modification, through cloud ionization technology, in Australia for 10 years. Australia, climate modification, 
In August 2018 the Commonwealth and Queensland governments announced funding for feasibility projects aimed at manipulating surface water temperatures using different techniques, one of which is marine cloud brightening, a process where salt crystals harvested from seawater are fired into clouds to make them more reflective. In September 2020 the Maritime Executive website published an article titled Who Governs Climate Intervention and Geoengineering on the High Seas. An image is used showing prototype cloud brightening equipment developed by the Southern Cross University, EMI Controls and the Sydney Institute of Marine Sciences, SIMS. The article states so far, 27 different marine geoengineering schemes have been proposed. There have been roughly 12 field tests, mostly focused on ocean iron fertilization for CO2 sequestration purposes. Snowy Hydro As mentioned earlier, in New South Wales the legislation for the Snowy Mountains Cloud Seeding Act 2004 was updated in 2012, changing a trial cloud seeding research project to cloud seeding operations. This is confirmed by Snowy Hydro in a September 2012 notification where they changed the name from Snowy Mountains to Snowy Hydro. Their last annual weather modification report was in 2021, the weather modification report start in 2013. They have been silent since the last 2021 report, probably because the Australian public are getting wise to the effects of weather modification being carried out over their area. The Snowy Hydro published reports contain detailed target area maps as well as other key data. New Zealand As far as I know, New Zealand does not have a weather and or a climate modification program in place but that does not mean it is not affected by inadvertent weather and or climate modification activities carried out by other countries nearby who are under the same weather systems whilst those weather systems are over their land or local seas. New Zealand is however involved in the production of weather modification, cloud seeding aeroplanes. In November 2023 the New Zealand-based news hub reported that the new Super PAC XSTOL plane can now fight the impact of climate change by rainmaking in drought-stricken areas. That was a summary of activities. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learnt something from it. Please don't forget to share it to social media networks, subscribe, thumbs up and donate if you are able to. I'll be back soon with some more info and news but until then, as always, look after yourselves and I'll see you next time.